All right, okay. there you go. <laughs> okay, uh, for this uh, session, we will be looking at the layers in the ggplot2. Um, the learning objectives are to use the aesthetics and geometries to build plots, uh, the using of facets for splitting the plots into subsets, uh, using statistics to, for understanding how GMs are calculated, making position adjustments when GMs might otherwise overlap, and use the coordinate systems to change what X and I, X and Y means. Um, basically, when you are going to plot data, you will have to, you will need the data that you are going to plot, the aesthetics, uh, that's how you will map your data. The geometries are the visual elements used for our data. The facets are plotting small multiples, so you can um, compare it to, to subplots. Uh, I think it was called in, in MATLAB. When I used MATLAB, it was a subplot that you had to use. Um, statistics, if you have to group of co or count or take uh, um, statistics value of your data, then you can um, aggregate with the statistics. The coordinates, the coordinates are to um, define how it will be spaced, how the data will be spaced, and with teams is to make it uh, either simple or more elegant or changing colors and stuff so that to make your graph more visually appealing. Um, in this case, for the for this session, we will be using the um, MPG data frame that's building with the ggplot2 package. It has 230 foot observations about a cars and some of the variables in the package are displacement, that's the car's engine size in liters, that's the numerical variable. Um, highway, that's the fuel efficiency on the highway. Um, and class, the type of car. This one is a, a cate categorical variable. Um, I was looking and here are the other uh, um, variables and with, with their description and what they are in the data sets. I, we will be using also the city. So compared to the highway, the one is the highway mileage, the other is the city mileage. So we can use those to create different plots. When you are going to map um, categorical variables, in this case, we will do the displacement and check for uh, highway and the class of the cars. So in this case, um, ggplot2 by default will only use six shapes. But in our data set, we have um, more than six shapes. And in this case, we, are, we will have 62 SOVs that are not plotted. But in that case, um, ggplot will give you a warning that it only used the six um, variables and then the ones that are um, the ones that are missing will will not be plotted. Another for another way of um, showing the the data is to use the alpha. The alpha is for transparency. When you are using a non-ordinal discrete variable, you will get um, a, a warning. So in this case, if we are going to plot x display and y is a high highway and use the size of class, you are seeing a warning that you are using a size a discrete variable. So it's, it, it will give you a warning. Also, if you are using uh, alpha, the, the discrete variable for alpha, it will also give you a, a warning in that case.
when you use an um, aesthetic ggplot will um select a reasonable case to use with the aesthetic and it will construct a, construct a legend that explains the mapping between the levels and the value if you don't want to show the le the, the legend on the plot you can use the um show legend uh, to false and then it will um not show the legend um when you have x and i x and y aesthetics you will not get a, a legend but it will give you the access line with tick marks and the label the access line acts as the legend but it, so in that case that explains the mapping between the locations and the values but if the defaults the the, the default uh, settings that uh, ggplot is using uh, and, and are not good for your for your needs you can also manually set the aesthetic group properties so for example if you want to change the color of the of, of the plot uh, the data in the plot to to a blue color then you can plot the data and you can set the color to blue so you will get the blue dots um in your um in your plot besides um f using color you can also change the shape to have different um visualization so you can set a color or you can use a shape and you have a here you have a table or a, a um, some of the built-in shapes that uh, R has that you can use to um, change the the shapes that you use in 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 the plots. Um, these are the exercises for the first part. Uh, uh, scatter plot. For the highway versus uh, displacement, and the points are pink filled with triangles. So, if you recall from the previous slides, the triangles are number two, or if you have a downward triangle, is number six. I'm using shape seventeen. Yes, yeah, shape seventeen is a is a, is is a triangle, but which can be filled which you can um, change the color of. So in that case, when you are going to plot, you will use the geom point to plot, to have the scatter plot. You can set the color to pink and then the shape to 17 so that you can get a triangle that's filled with the pink color. Um, Geometric objects, it, you can, there are different ways that you can describe, describe the, the, the same data. So for example, you can uh, use, as we did before, a scatter plot with geom point, but you can also do, for example, a smooth, so that you will smooth out the all the data and have a line through it to show a, a tendency are a trend so in this case you are showing the same data it's always x versus y uh, display versus highway but in one case you are using gm point and you will get the scatter plot or you use gm smooth and you will have the a trend line or a trend line of, of the data that's that has been smoothed smoothed out One thing to, to take an account, let me go back here. If, for example, you have GM point, we've seen in the previous plot that we can use um, shapes to change the shape, it's a set of dots. You can use triangles and such. And here in this case, with the smooth, you, are, uh, you have a line. So when you are going the, when you have those type of geoms, some of them you can, um, change their um, appearance 
but for not for all, not every change of appearance is uh, valid for every type of geom. So for example, if you have a shape, a point, you can set the shape, but if you have a line, you can't change the shape of the line. So if you have a line plot, you can change the shape. Maybe you can, in that case, you can um, change a line type. For example, in the case of the, the smooth, GM smooth, you can um, draw different types of line and that you can do with the argument of line time. So for example, we have um, two examples here. Again, the data is the same, it's the display and the highway and you have a shape of, and you are saying you want the shape based on drive, but because you are using a GM smooth, it will ignore the shape because it doesn't know how to handle a, a shape for a line. But instead, if you use the displacement versus highway, and then you say the line type has to change based on the drive, you will then when you um, do the plot of the GM smooth, you will see that depending on the, on the drive, you will have a different type of line types in your plot of the GM smooth. Here we are, here we have um, some other examples with, with using um, GM Smooth. There are three plots. One of one is the plot where the smooth line, where the trend is not um, is disregarding. So it's for all the points, it doesn't matter which drive it is. So in this case, use the, the first one, display versus um, highway and just plot the smooth. The second graph is you, you're you also plotting display versus highway, but in this case, you are grouping by drive. So if you group by drive, you will see you will get um, three GM smooths with um, each one for each of the different drives. And in the third plot, we are mixing the things because in this case, you will always also um, plot the display versus the highway. You will also have one plot that is the smooth with, with uh, where the color is changed by the drive. And then you have a general smooth plot that's uh, for all the for all the the observations independent of the drive so this one is the one that you see in the first plot and basically you can say um superimposed the other plot but in this case every line of the of the different drives are different colors and in this case because we are using show legend false, it will uh, not show the legend. But if it, if you didn't show that, you will have a legend here showing which drive is which column. There's also possibility to spe specify different data for different la layers. For example, you can use um, a red car, uh, red points, red dots to um, show a filter when, when you have a, a certain type of uh, car, in this case, a two-seater. So for example, in this plot, what you're doing is you are again um, plotting display, um, displacement versus um, highway. You will have a scatter plot for all the points then you will um, superimpose that with a, a, a scatter plot where you are filtering using the class as a three seater. And then you have uh, red dots with, uh, so the red dots are the ones where the um, you have a, a car that has a two seater. And you can also, to, to make it more um, visually, um, so that is more obvious. You can also do an open circle 
with a, a slightly bigger size so that you have a, a red dot with a circle around it. Um, below we have a, a, a histogram and density plot and a box plot. What you are doing in, in these cases is also showing the same data, but with showing different um, um, geo geometries, you will have another representation of the same data. In the case of the, the histogram, and you can see that the that the density, the distribution of the highway mileage is bimodal. So it has to speak and it's right skew. And in the case of the box plot, you can see that are two outliers, which are these, these two, dot, those two dots that are at the right side. Um, the, the, it's the distribution is bimodal because you see you have two peaks in the data. There are a lot of uh, geoms that they can use, but of course, it will depend on what uh, what you use are, what you need to show in your in your um, in your report or in your plot. But there are references, the function reference, and also um, some popular. Um, extensions that, that can help you create other plots for ggplot that are also very helpful. Um, the exercise for this chapter is not here, but I don't know if someone needs a, I do have um, this here. Um, I'm not sure if someone needs uh, wants us to go through them. I will go if there is um, some. So, or otherwise, I will go through the slides to the other chapters. And if it's if it's needed, we can come back to the to the plot to the exercises and see if someone has a uh, some question about one of them. Okay. Yeah. For the facets, the facets is like we, like we said, it's a, a, a way of uh, subplotting. So way to, if you have, uh, you can split the plot into subplots so that you can uh, have a subset of data that may make it easier for, to you, for you to um, show some data based on a categorical variable. Um, you have also you can use a uh, facet red that we used in in the in a previous chapter, but uh, facet grid can give you more um, flexibility to lay out uh, your the your subplots. Um, as an example, using facet red and using uh, facet grid, you can see these two plots where you are again this um plotting the display versus highway and uh, you have scatter plots scatter plots for each and then you uh, you can um use the facet wrap for cylinders in this case you ha will have a subplot for four cylinders for five cylinders eight um sorry six and eight cylinders and you have displacement versus highway and if you are going to do um, a facet grid, you have to, and you do it drive um, and cylinder, then you will have um, cases where you have empty empty subplots, and in those cases, this um, this empty subplots with, with, does mean that that isn't. Um, um, data available for that specific um, combination of drive or cylinder. So in this case, you have uh, this one that's a five and four, this one is uh, um, empty and this other one. So those are the cases that you that there are no combination of drive and cylinders. 
So in that case, you will have a, a, an empty supply. Um, so the same for the exerciser for facets, we can check them later. The statistics um, transformation. Basically, when you are plotting an X versus Y, you are telling the um, ggplot what to put on X and what to put on Y to plot your data. If you are doing um, this other type of where you're using only your X, in this case, X is cut, the number that appears on the Y axis is come from a transformation um, that ggplot does automatically to um, plot the information. In this specific case, case, it will do the count. So it will um, group the data by, by the cut and then count the um, count the observations or the yes the observation in each of those group. So what you're getting is fair has a lo lower count of, of observations than ideal, which has a higher count of uh, more than uh, uh, twenty thousand um, observations. Basically, when you do the GM bar, it will get the data. The, the whole data set, it will transform it. It use a, a count, so it will group by fair, so to speak, group by each of the, the different uh, cuts and then counts the observation at them. And then it will show the cut on the I, um, X axis and the count on the Y axis. Um, in, this, in the case of GM bar, it uses the count as the default um, statistical transformation and you can check um you can use the help to see which of the which um statistical transformation is used for each of the geoms in in uh in ggplot but in case you might you want to override it so in case you don't want to use the code but for example, you want to have a proportion, then you can uh, also ch change the step. In this case, you can use the cut, and then you say the i, the y is the after start of the properties. And then you can groove it. And then you see instead of uh, the counts, you will have the, uh, um, the proportions. Also, if you want to um, have other statistical information, you can use the stat summary that summarizes the y value for each unique x value. So you will you can have the minimum, the maximum, the median, and in this way you can have a. Um, it seems it, it's more or less um, similar to a box plot, but it, in this case, it's not a box. It's a line with the different um, um, stats that you want to, to highlight for your, for your data. There are 20 stats that you can use and using a stat bin in the help, you can see which one you can use that are available for you. Um, for the positions. In this case, um, you can change also the the color of the person of one what you of your of the bars and of your um, plot. Um, the difference here is that if you use the color for a, a bar, you are changing the outline. And it will keep the, the same, the, the default um, gray um, um, color. So if you actually want to change the bar, you will have to change the fill. In this case, you are having the, you're showing the cut on the X axis and you want all the different uh, cuts to have a, a different color. So in this case, you put the fill 
also equal to cos. But if you if now you have the x and cot, but then in each cot you have to you want to show a different color for, for the clarity, then you can do that and you put a fill is equal to clarity, and then you will have each bar stacked with the different clarities, and you will have a legend showing you what the different different clarities are um, in the bar that are stuck, stacked. In this case, the stacking is um, automatically because it has a default uh, adjustment. So in this case, it will um, give you the, the, the bar with its original, um, uh, the original height and then stack with a proportion, the different clarities. But you can also have other uh, options to use that are identity, dodge, or fill. And here you can see the different plots that are that are here. For example, if you do um, the you if you put the diamonds and then you create a plot with the, for the cuts and then you fill by clarity. Then you can create the bar with the alpha is uh, one fifth. That's the um, transparency. And then you have the position by identity. Yes, um, these plus, I, personally, I, I don't, uh, understand them i don't think they are they they rather confusing I, I i rather have the dodged um i i i rather have the dodged one because it, i think it's the the solid colors are more um and, and for, for my case um are easier to interpret This also um the overplotting. When I saw the when I saw the plot, I didn't. I I had a question like when. After you do a a, a scatter plot, when do you um is it, if there is a rule of thumb that you can like follow to say um that you can add a jitter or something else to to make it stand out because if in this case it was um you have 234 um um observation and you will have only 160 126 points so in this case when you see the plot you don't have any information about that only when you do the jitter for example, in this case, here you have a, a, a single point over here. But if you have a jitter, you will see that you have like two points in the in the in the same um position. So in that case, my, my question would be um if there is some rule of thumb, if for example, if we do the number of observation is like X and you have a, a certain number, I, I don't know the X um divided by two or something in this case it's more or less the same it's the half so you have half the half f unique points if that's a, a a rule of thumb that you can use to um yes to to add some jitter of as we can also see in the exercises the they propose to, to use um different sizes from the for the dots that you can see if a dot is a bigger or, or smaller you can have uh, um, the size will indicate that there are more more dots in that same at that same spot. So I was wondering if I, I don't know if anyone has some suggestions or that you just always have to double check how many observations you have and how many unique um, um, data points it will be and if it um, if it will be helpful to add some jitter or, or some other technique to show when you plot that there are overlapping points. One uh, 
I, I, it's kind of similar, but um, for GeoJitter, I made it to some point with it. I, I found out when I first used it in a publication that uh, if you're using GeoJitter box plot, you know, it makes those uh, points that are the outlier plots, if mm -hmm. they're outliers, the, the dots on top. If you add GeoJitter to that, it doubles the points. So if you have like only seven, if, if you have uh, five outliers and then you use GeoJitter, it'll show 10 points instead of uh, five, for instance. And so you have to use something like shape equals NA in the outlier plot, uh, in the outliers of the geom box plot. So it doesn't double plot the points. Um, so you, you are adding jitter to the, to the box plot? Or did I understand? Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's only with the outliers. Oh, okay. um, in, like, in like five minutes, I shall, I'll just quickly write up a little simulation to show the example. Cause it's like super, it was super important for me. Um, okay. but when, when it comes to the geom jitter though, I definitely changed the width a little bit, make it a little wider. I, I don't have a general rule of when and how, but, um, or maybe using alpha. So if there's a ton of points and there's a lot of density, you can change. So if there's a lot, it'll be darker. Darker, if there's yeah. It'll be lighter. I, I don't know if anyone has anything better. I think in the ex in the exercise and there was a plot that was using yeah, I think it's in the in the exercise and there's a plot that you can use um um either the jitter or the size uh, I don't really remember the um I don't remember what you have to do, but you can um have bigger um points, bigger dots or circles, what whatever your your shape is, when there are more points on the in the in the plot. So I think that could also be uh, uh helpful to visualize that there are overlapping points, which also will give you information like there are some grouping there because it's true that if you only see this one, when it seems like okay, those are the points, but there may be more density to it. So it's, uh, yeah, it, I, I think it's an important thing to, to take an account. Okay. Um, exercises. The coordinate systems. Um, yeah, this one, like they said, is a uh, quite of complicated, complicated and it will, I think surely depend on what your use cases are, well, because most of the time, and we are more used to um, the the um, the Cartesian x versus y, um, which is the default. Um, but there are other um, systems. You can even flip the system if if needed, so that you can have y, x and y flipped if your um, if your visualization required it. Um, there are also mappings for um, coordinations to create maps and the polar coordinations. But like I said, those are specifically when when if I have to do something with maps, I, I, I use leaf lab. It's not that I am a, an, ex, an expert, but I, I tend not to use ggplot for that. But that's just a... a, a, a I don't, didn't have a need yet to use um, ggplot for maps. Um, but here is an, an example. If you are going to plot the, the data of a map of New Zealand, if you don't actually um, use the quick map to set the aspect ratio correctly for maps, so um, maps, um, um, world maps and, and such, you will have a uh, like a stretch out um a, a stretch out uh, version of your map. So in that case, you can use the court quick map to actually show the the correct aspect ratio for for your map. Um, this one also kind of a blow my mind. I don't understand the graph a lot, so I think it's more showing that it can be done, but I'm not sure what the usefulness would be to change a, a bar plot and just uh, have it uh, in, in a coordinate and the, the polar um, coordinates. 
active map for generating. So the core flip I can understand. So if you have uh, you, if you want to change in between horizontal and vertical um bar graphs, um that's that's the first graph that I, I can understand that. But the second one I don't even understand the axis. So for me it's a little like uh I the 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 information is of course easier shown in the in the in the bar plot instead of this um forward plot, but. Of course, it probably has its use because otherwise it wouldn't be. It. I've seen um pol um um polar plots in in the past where when doing other stuff, but I don't recall right now. It was uh oh, it was for a, a recording. It was a recording that was continually recording uh sensor values in the field, but it was a mechanical thing that was uh with a weather plotter, but uh. I haven't had personally much use of uh, um, polar coordinates. Um, oh, for the resources, there are a couple of resources like the ggplot um, cheat sheets and the package website. The extension gallery that we already said that I every once in a while I I take a look at it because there are some interesting plots and you may get ideas of what to do maybe using the this um same extensions or at least get some ideas to do the things to to make your your maps uh your uh your plots uh better and there are other of the um. Other of the galleries and resources that you can use to have uh, different um, plots. As we still have some time, I'm not sure if we can go through some of the exercises, um, or if someone has some some specific question. Looks like we're good. <laughs> okay. John, can I ask you a question? Maybe you maybe you know because I put it on the chat before. Um, so what's the deal with group in the aesthetic? Because I uh, never know how to use that one. I I did reply in the chat. Um it's it's oh, usually you'll end up doing it. yeah, a lot of times you'll end up doing like a color or fill that kind of takes it. it does the grouping for you because yeah. that serves as a group but the i think the main case i can think of is well i was gonna say i did say stacked bar charts but you're gonna want to fill those with a different color so that will cover the group so i can't i'm sure i i know for sure i have had cases where i've used it but it's basically just a way to split the data into different <laughs> um different families but again like almost always you'll end up coloring by that thing that you're splitting by yeah. and that serves to do the grouping i guess if you're yeah. creating like a black and white chart then yeah. maybe um yeah. but even then you would want to do like a different line type or something probably um okay. I'm, I, I, I'm sure i have examples i just i can't think of any right now like maybe if you had like a one curve that goes up and another curve that goes down you might not bother having those in different colors and then you would just want to group to uh to split the points into those different curves um yeah i'm trying to see i don't have a good example <laughs> but yeah it's just it's yeah it's a way to create different groups of um you know points or whatever groups of data without doing something else different to them. And almost okay. always it, it you end up not needing it because you're doing something else to differentiate those groups on the on the chart. Uh, no, this helps because I thought I, I needed because I didn't understand it. 
I thought <laughs> I should use some of my brain power to understand it, but now I know that I <laughs> understand it. So thanks, John. Yeah, I know you put my brain right. um, <laughs> at ease. So um, this thing that Donald said is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I just quickly wrote some code where I took the iris data set and I plotted the box plots, right? And so the leftmost box plot is uh, shows those outlier dots, right? Now, if you add geom jitter to that, you can see, if you look at the way, way top here, there's more than one point. Um, and there actually is only one point at that spot. And so if you do outlier dot shape NA, that removes the outlier from geom box plot but it keeps the jitter of all the points. So then uh, you remove that extra point. And the only way I found out about this is because I, I published a paper with uh, 10 subjects with box plots. And then one of the reviewers literally counted every dot on the plot and they said, there's more <laughs> patience here than there isn't. And I've never had someone pay that much detail to something. And I was super confused and I thought I messed up the data and it turns out that it was just that scenario. So, yeah. But but in this time and age, because there have been uh, people uh, uh, saying a lot about the, the 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 papers that are being published and with with manipulated data and such, so I think someone said, okay, I will count this dude's. Uh... Yeah, it's only, it's only like ten, it's only like ten subjects, right? So like, what's uh, yeah, it's not too difficult to do that. Yeah, but it's an interesting note that I never knew about until I like until someone brought it up to me. So. I think I think I did put it in the chat. It might be up like three comments. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm not. You know, I'm not sure what will happen to that in the log. Huh. I, I, here, I'll uh, I'll just uh, hold on. I'll just uh, I I wrote the code. I'll just. <laughs> is it okay if I just put all the code in there? Uh, or it might be easier to just put the image, paste the image directly into the Slack. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, sure. Yeah. Once, once, once the the chat and the video is up, you can add it. Perfect. In, in the yeah, Slack I can, I'll gladly do that. Yeah. 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 The thing from from the exercise, the thing that I was uh, rambling about the jitter size and uh, the jitter and the, the size, I, I found the the question. It's the geom jitter and the geom count. So if you use the jitter, you can see the it, it does the jitter, and if you use count. You will see um, that the points are a, a little bit bigger, so that's also a way for you to see that's uh, that are points that are overlapping. So um, yeah, I I will keep thinking, but I think it's just a matter of looking how many observations you have and how many unique points you have, and if it's a low number or if it's a big difference, then you may take into account to add a jitter or uh, some other visualization trick to, to let people know that there are overlapping points there. Oh, and the other one that I saw that I was looking at is the one of uh, um, to create the chart. I don't know if any, so create the pie. But that again, if if you already have options to create the the pie chart using the port system, the the polar coordinates, I mean it's it's nice to know it's there, but personally, it's not like a, something I would use. Okay. Anyone have any other question? There's a there's another really cool pie chart package. I used to like hate pie charts because like you'd like diehard Tufty fan or whatever. But I, I started using it recently when um you know, when you have when you're trying to show a um show like a denominator of a like a numerator of like two denominators or something, like a subset of a subset of data, like some pie charts are pretty useful. And there's a there's a R package that allows you to pull out one or one of the pieces of the pie. And so you can highlight it. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name of it. I'm not sure if anyone 
uses that and like has an idea of what it's called. Um, kind of, uh, I'm blanking on it right now. But I'm actually not know that it really badly. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, th I have an example. I, I'm swiftly searching for it in my uh, in my uh, results mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. You you have to be really careful with you know pie charts or really anything that is polar coordinates. But it's not. I, I agree that it's not never. Like as long as you don't have too many pieces of pie. Exactly. Uh, that's that's the main thing when you you know. Like if the if the legend isn't as easy to read, then you shouldn't have a pie chart. Um, I think that's a good, easy rule of thumb. <clears throat> um, and then also uh, some of the like um, there's a, a animated plot of um, like global temperature over time that goes around mm -hmm. on social media over time or uh, goes around on social media every once in a while. And that one is polar coordinates because it's the cycle of the year. Um, and that's a case where polar coordinates just make sense because you want to have a cycle that mm -hmm. you're showing. Um, so anything that actually is uh, a loop, <laughs> I think can make sense in polar coordinates, but um, mm -hmm. it's pretty rare. Okay. <laughs> Interesting on the image thing. and. I'm interested to see if you break the automated systems with these. I, I didn't know you could put images in. Uh, oh yeah. In chat. Can, and so. Can you see them? Yeah. Uh, okay. But when they. Oh, when, when you download gonna... it and try to post it on the Slack automatically, I think it just. I mean, presumably people have done this before and nothing is broken, <laughs> so I, I think it just removes the image. I think the because the file is just a text file. Okay. Or at least I, well, it always I, has I put, been. Okay, well, I put both <laughs> images in the um uh, in Slack. In the, uh, in, in the Slack, so okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I yeah, hope I mean, that it knows, doesn't yeah. turn the chat into a different format, <laughs> and the automated system chokes on it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to happen. Uh, you know, good to have a controlled case that I can watch out for. Uh, so if it does break, I'll I'll know what to look for at least okay. all right well okay. well like i said uh next week you know i i posted in the chat to see if um if she's available for that presentation if not i'll make sure i'm ready to go uh and yeah i will see you then okay see you guys then <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Oh. Bye.